I have a friend of mine. I've known this guy for a while, and I've watched him. Have always been inspired uh, and awe-spired in and awe-spired by him. Uh, Dr. Eddie Connor, man, thank you for joining. I appreciate you. Bless you, bro. Hey, Glad to hey, be on your show, hey. man. Now, now, you know, what people that have to understand about you is that you're one of these uh, gifted guys. You know, you preach, yeah. you teach, you run seminars, you write books, um, and you have a powerful testimony of what God did for you in terms of your physical healing. Absolutely. And uh, so I want to I want to thank you for coming on the show. Let's let's start right there though because. You know, I always, I've, I've almost actually forgotten that you had cancer. Mm, right? Wow. That's, I mean, a, that's, that's a blessing. Yeah, so. right. Yeah. I mean, that's how amazing yeah. you are at living, mm -hmm. right? That I forget yeah. that you almost died. Wow. Right? That's so that's profound. not even a yeah. part. When I yeah. think Dr. Eddie Connor, I don't even think health challenge, mm -hmm. right? I just mm -hmm. think vibrant and alive. But take us back. Take us back. I mean, how old were you? Uh, how'd you find out, and, and what were you facing? Yeah, uh, you know, as, like songs said, my soul looks back uh -huh. and wonder right. how I made it over. Right, right. Uh, I'm a living witness. Your test is a testimony. Your misery is ministry. Your mess is a message. Your stumbling block is a stepping stone. And what God does is he uses your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. Okay. He literally uses your tragedy as strategy to get wow. your life to the next Tragedy level. as strategy. strategy. Yes, sir. My God. I'm and preaching that <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> That's a song. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, at the age of 15, I faced one of my greatest perplexing and in incredibly uh, transformative ch challenges in my life. You talk about a season of change. Yeah. That was, I, I truly went through a season of change to where I'm experiencing chest pains and not necessarily knowing what was going on. At and, 15 years old. 15 so years in high school. I'm in high school, sophomore in high school. And you just have chest pains have, one day. I have chest pains and out you're of thinking, the what, this is gas, this is, well, you don't know I, what I this thought is. It, I didn't know what it was, okay. you know, and I'm, I'm, I, I make a long story short, I'm taken to the hospital, can't breathe by halftime, watching a Rose Bowl game with my friend. And uh, his mother takes me there, and the doctors thought there was a punctured lung. And uh, it could have been a misdiagnosis. And they did a little bit more inductive study, CT scan the chest. They see they need to do an X-ray and take me into surgery immediately. Cut me open, and my, they see my cells in my body are growing so fast they can see them growing with the naked eye. They hold on, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, they open you up. Open me up. And the cells are growing so fast they can see a mass growing, growing with the naked eye. Without a microscope. Without a microscope. And so what kind of cancer was this? Well, uh, came out of surgery, felt great. The doctor says, we well, have a diagnosis for you. He says, you have NHL. Okay. I'm a black kid from the east side of Detroit. Right. I'm thinking, I'm, I just hit the lottery, never played the Powerball. Right. I've, I've, I'm getting ready to be the youngest owner of a National Hockey League team. Right, right, right. right. You got the NHL. <laughs> NHL. Yeah, right. I he mean. says, no, he says, uh, it's non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I said, Doc, wow. my first language is Ebonics. I'm still trying to learn English. What right. do you mean? He said, you've been diagnosed with not one, not two, not three, but four. I felt my pockets to find four dollars. Right. He said, you've been diagnosed with stage four cancer. At 15 years at old. At the age of 15. Okay. Every second in America, two, three people are diagnosed with cancer, one in every 1,000 teenagers. Now, I'm already a statistic in America's eyes as a black male. Right. Now, to have a st statistical diagnosis that I'm not going to live, right. possibly, right. is now my lot and my story. Right. And um, my father never visited me one day in the hospital, my own biological father. You know, you, you talk about how do you mm. play a role when you weren't given a script. Right. Um, and oftentimes, as men, we... we we hold in so much pain uh, because vulnerability and masculinity seemingly cannot coexist in the same space. Right. And I was in a vulnerable place in my life. But it, if it had not been for the grace of God mm -hmm. and a praying mama, I right. wouldn't, be here, wouldn't be here today. today. And so yeah. talk to me about, I mean, is it surgery and then recovery? Are you, is it medication? I mean, so from, from 15, you realize you're in this predicament. How do you get... To recovery. A lot of dark days of depression, dismay, mental discombobulation, chemotherapy and radiation five days a week. And you're still, going to, and you're still going to school? Could you're not go after a while. I okay. was on the homebound program because of the, the aggressive form of cancer. They had to do some aggressive form of treatment. So I'm on the homebound program, um, seemingly not going to even graduate with my, with my class. 
um, doing a lot of work and I'm, you know, nausea, you know, you, the pain you go through, you wouldn't even wish it on your worst enemy. Right. Um, and if I'm telling you every single day that I believe that I was going to make it and I was going to overcome, I'm lying to you. Mm-hmm. With my mother saying, you got to get into the word on your own. We own the word network, so right. I had to put the word right. on it. Right, I got Psalm it. Psalm 18, 17, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Speaking the word of God over my life, speaking right. life into my life. Right. When my, my hair follicles are, are on the pillow and you wake up in the morning. Right. When right. there's nobody there for you. Right. When, you're, when you're battling depression and the challenges of life. I went through an incredible season of change, but I came out transform from the inside my 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 yes, and so let's fast forward and so you don't die no and you end up thriving yes um now we can in cancer yeah yes sir yeah now are you preaching at 15 or is is preaching something that comes because of your search to deepen your faith because of the cancer you know three years before i was afflicted i knew my gift Okay. Which was which was to preach. I knew my calling at at the age of twelve. Okay. And I realized if you're gifted, you will be afflicted. Okay. So three years later, I'm afflicted with this disease of cancer. I preached my first message in Jamaica, where I grew up, uh, Kingston, Jamaica. Yeah, man, no problem. Well, okay. All right. All right. All grew right. Grew up there for. Give me some uh, jerk chicken and some hallelujah. You already hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and so I'm preaching my first message in Jamaica to preach the message called "Destined to Overcome the Odds." Okay. And I have cancer in my body. I'm literally preaching to myself, and those people prayed for me. Okay. And brought me through a specific storm in my life. Okay. You know, it, I even saw it as the blood of Jesus was covering me so much to where my message didn't even pl- print out in black. It printed out in red ink. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> I can't make it up if yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, and to minister out of my pain, minister out of my misery, and declare that I'm going to make it. I'm not going to die, but mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm not just going to survive, but I'm going to thrive right, right. through this. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm a living witness that God can bring you out. He'll bring you through, but you got to believe him. You got to trust him. And you got to say in the name of Jesus, I got the victory. Amen to that. So now yes, you're, sir. you're in the Detroit area. It's like a home base for you. Yes, sir. And uh, so, so bring us up to speed now. What do, so what are you doing now? What does Dr. Eddie Connor do now? You know, I am, a, uh, of course, a minister, but also a motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. I teach over at Marygrove College, social justice and literacy development. Okay. And I'm a writer. Okay. Uh, I've written eight books now. Eight and books? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And, uh, of course, work a lot with our youth in the community, rolling up my sleeves and really empowering our, our brothers, mm-hmm. uh, transforming their lives as they transition from boyhood to manhood. Okay, okay, okay. And today, I mean, part of the reason why I wanted you to come on is that uh, your story is so powerful, and I think... You know, we a lot of us don't look like what oh, we've been my. through, good. right? Uh, yeah. We are stars with scars, mm, right? That's good. Um, you know, there's a story about the man. I know you heard the story about the man that was fishing, right? Mm. And, uh, you know, he'd been told that there were alligators in the ravine. Mm. He's fishing. He feels a tug on the, the little fishing line. Yeah. He, he thinks he's got a fish. Turns out it's an alligator. He goes down with the net to get the fish. Alligator comes out the water, grabs him. Mm. He wakes up unconscious uh, in a hospital. Wow. Wakes up in the hospital, comes to consciousness, and he recovers. Mm. And one day he's sitting at, sitting at the table, and friends stop by to see how he's doing while he's convalescing. And they say, how you doing? And he said, well, I'll show you better than I can tell you. Mm. And uh, they said, well, show us what? He said, well, show you my scars, right? Yeah. And so he shows them scars, and they say, okay, what are those? He said, well, these are my bad scars, mm. okay? These are the scars that I got from the alligator mm-hmm. and, um, and he turns around and he points to his back and to scars that are underneath his shoulders and mm-hmm. his arms and they said well what are those are those are alligator scars too he said no those are my good scars mm. he said those are your good scars <laughs> he said yeah those are the scars uh, that I got from the guy who pulled me out of the alligator's death grip wow Right, and, and and a lot of us, right, mm-hmm. we stars, but we got mm-hmm. scars, mm-hmm. We, but we got good and bad scars, right? We got scars, right, that that identify our pain, but we also got scars that remind us we came out. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, and you know that's why I wanted you on because you, I know people are watching all around the world, mm-hmm. and uh, may have may have cancer, may have some challenge, but they need to know that they can do all things through Christ. That's right. 
who is their strength. Yes. Right. Um, and so now let's. But the other reason why I wanted you to come on is because you got this new book. Yeah. And I did. I, I knew you were a writer. I didn't know you had eight books. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, I write a little bit too, but well, yeah. I don't have any books. I, I, hey, you one know, day I'm gonna be as prolific as Ryu. Bro. Oh no, no, <laughs> I, got, I mean I'm 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 eight books down. Like, <laughs> so, listen, uh, 66 books in the Bible. I've only written eight, so oh, I got a long hey, way hey, to go. Hey, 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 <laughs> well, you know. Um, so this book, though, um, woman. Yeah. Now, usually when people come on the Word Network, it's a book about you know how to how to seek the Lord or mm -hmm. how to be blessed. This is this book says woman. It has a picture of a full figured. African American woman on here, and people maybe can't see these these words, but woman, you are strong. You are strong, caring, wonderfully fun, loving, amazing, wise, orchestrating, smart, special, valued, magnan magnanimous, achievement, beauty, radiant, beloved, femininity. Now, why? Well, what motivated you as an African American man mm -hmm. to write a book? Entitled "Woman," and I, I, I suppose it's for women. I mean, just yeah, tell, yeah. tell me about the, uh, the 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 motivational process here for this book. Well, absolutely. You know, um, I was raised by a queen, my mother, okay. Dr. Janice Connor, who really instilled in me the the whole essence of what a gentleman does and how he's supposed to treat and respect a woman. Mm -hmm. Especially as we see the the climate of what has taken place in America as of as of recent, many of the events. And the thing that I wanted to impress upon women is that you are enough. Hmm. You know, uh, I define woman as wonderfully orchestrating magnanimous achievements naturally. Okay. That's my oh, acronym. That's your acronym that's for my woman. Acronym. All right. And Say that know, one more time. Wonderfully orchestrating magnanimous achievements naturally. That's you. That's, that's you. you. All that's right. you. Yeah. And so many times, you know, life is 10% what happens to us, 90% how we react to okay. it. Okay. However, 90% of the time we focus on the 10% that the 10% now becomes 100% of our lives. Why should 2% of women who are on magazines and on TV screens control how 98% of women feel about themselves? Wow. And the whole aspect, you see, yes, you see the curves, this, that, and the other, but it's not so much what's on you, it's about what's in you. Real women don't compete, they collaborate. Okay. They don't chase a man, they chase their purpose and plan. Okay. Uh, they don't, they don't, they understand that their royalty demands loyalty. Okay. So they wear their crown and they build their queendom in the kingdom of God. Okay. And so understanding the essence of who you are, you know, it doesn't matter if you take a man's name, if you don't know your essence, your nature, and your name, taking his name won't make a difference. Right. So beyond just getting a man, you got to know your purpose in God's plan. Okay. And that's what I wanted to direct women to really speak life into their lives and to really be an ally. We get th you think about gender pay. Women make 70 cents to every white man's dollar. As a matter of fact, 68 cents for black women uh, or even less than that. And then the wealth inequality gap. Right. You think about the, the rights and the issues. They're paid uh, less, but they have to do more. They do. Uh, they create something from nothing. Or you give a woman groceries, she'll give you a meal. Right. You give her furniture, she'll decorate a house. Right. You, you give her a house, she'll give you a home. Right. They create something from nothing. So I really just wanted to empower and impress and impact women to recognize their, their value. value and so their this worth. book here is a book for all women. All women. And yes. it is a book of inspiration. Yeah. A man's perspective on the supreme, supernatural, divine, dignified, powerful presence of women. Yeah. And, and you know, we ended up, we're at the Word Network, yeah. right? And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm a yeah. black guy, and I'm a pastor. Yeah. And, you know, you, you're a black guy. You're a preacher. Now, we know there's a lot of chauvinism. Sure, sure, yeah. In the black church. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the white church, too. In yeah. the church, we In the church say. in general. Um, and... I think it's it's powerfully profound for a man to fight for and defend mm -hmm. a a space an equal space yeah. for women mm -hmm. right um because for so long men have you know we, you know we it's, it's like we emulate the worst mm -hmm. of 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 people that we see you know so women be silent in the church of course they don't know what that scripture means <laughs> they don't know what that scripture is talking about right. You know what I mean? That you know, but women be quiet. I I always say that I don't want women to be quiet in church, mm -hmm. because if the women were quiet in church, 
I w- there wouldn't be nobody saying nothing because the men don't say nothing no way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but when we think about you know civil rights movement, Fannie Lou Hamer, Rosa Parks, when we think about black churches, the women drive a lot of our black churches. You know, sure. uh, Ella Baker. You know, the secretaries. I mean, I mean, the women are moving, and like you said about the home, women are running the home, handling the home. Um, why do you think though that chauvinism is still such a strong hold? In our communities and in our churches, I mean, why, 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 why is there still this reticence to not only acknowledge and admire, but but lift up and and support, um, you know, the praise and the value of women in mm-hmm. our, in our churches and in our community? Well, it's it's in many cases a divide and conquer, domineering aspect. Okay, um, you know, to to elevate oneself, some people feel like you have to put somebody else down. Mm-hmm even if they are of, of the same ethnicity, uh, just because they're a different gender, uh, a lot of times we feel that to usurp my authority, um, I have to now be patriarchal and chauvinistic and put my foot down on you. Mm-hmm. Rather than understanding that if I lift you up, I lift myself up as well. Right, right. Because we're, we're literally all in this fight together. And uh, even understanding the whole aspect of, you know, there's no male or female in God. You have a gift. There's something that you can speak into my life. There's something that you can do to improve your community, do some good in your hood, so to speak. Right. Even the scripture calls for the welling women. Where would we be without the prayers of a woman? Right. Where would we be without the women not just standing on the sideline, but standing on the front lines? Malcolm X said this, the most neglected, unprotected, and disrespected woman in America mm-hmm. is the black woman. Right, right. And oftentimes we, we demonize and criticize and put her down. When you can see all the, the different spaces and media and entertainment and even all the way down to the church air aspect, that they don't necessarily get the credibility and the, the notoriety that they deserve. Right. And I believe it's, it's important. I believe God is changing the seasons, <laughs> changing the aspect mm. to where those who have been put, uh, put in, the, in the, the throes of life behind the scenes are getting ready to come to the forefront. Yeah, yeah, powerful. You know, there's a movie that, that came out this year uh, that is topping the charts, breaking yeah. uh, the box office numbers, generating revenue around the world. It features an all-black cast. Yes. It's called Black Panther. Actually, Bla- the Black Panther is a Marvel superhero yeah. that was invented in 1966, shortly after the Black Power Movement started mm. in uh, America during the Civil Rights Movement. Of course, the James Meredith March was happening. He was shot. Stokely Carmichael and Martin mm. Luther King, SCLC, and SNCC picked up the march and continued the march. Stokely got up to speak one day, didn't tell anybody, and said black power, put his fist up in the air. That changed the entire narrative. Mm. 1966 to 2018. 2018, during Black History Month, the Black Panther comes out. It's not the same Black Panther of Stokely Carmichael or the Black Panther of the Black Panther Party, but it is still symbolically um, a black power, black pride, black is beautiful, black mm. is bad, black mm. is all that, Jesus is black, you know, <laughs> God is black, my president is black, yeah, it's yeah, just, right. you know, it's that, right? And people are dressing up in African garb and putting their fists in the air, mm. you know, and uh, celebrating the Jamaican heritage and yeah, the African yeah. diaspora. Oh, yeah. But one of the things about that movie that mm. struck me was that the Black Panther had a guard and the guard were all black, black women. All women. You understand know what I'm saying? And so, you know, <laughs> and, and, and I'm watching it, man. And these sisters, man, they, they're they fine. They're beautiful, man. they bald-headed, no weed. Mm. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark skin, mm. right? Smooth skin tone. Your voice and, changing, and, Reverend. And, oh, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> it was, I'm watching the movie, man, and I'm in the, I'm in the Holy Ghost and, 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 <laughs> and watching this movie, and I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but, but the Lord would send me one of them. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because yes, I, I don't have one yes, like sir. that. Right. You know what I, mean? I don't have one. Like, I don't know one like In that. due time. Hey, but I was like, Lord, send me one of them. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Yes, they sir. got the spear and they got right. some, you know, right. that can fight. Right. You know, Absolutely. and so when I when I hear you talk about women, man, that movie, The Black Panther, has 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 inspired so many people. But one of the things I've seen consistently is that how they portray black women. Mm-hmm. You know, the sister is the engineer. His mm-hmm. sister, black woman, is the engineer. Mm-hmm. She's come, she comes up with the technology. Mm-hmm. You know, his mother, you know, Angela Bassett plays his mother. Mm-hmm. Very queen, very regal. Um, and so it is, it is the portrayal of black women in a positive light that has inspired so many. And I think that's just the beginning, right? Yeah. That's just the tip 
of the iceberg. Um, and and that's and that's where we're going. And so I mean, I really just want to applaud you. Yeah. And 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 you, you're you're right in line. You know, whether it's the negative, the Me Too, right, or the positive, mm -hmm. how black women are being portrayed in in movies like The Black Panther, yeah. mm -hmm. women, the voice of the woman. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I mean, we are in the age. Yeah. Of the woman, and I think women woman. need the yeah. girls need to know that. Yeah, they need right? to. Right, like yeah. girls can be pastors now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when I was coming up, I went. I'm not so sure I knew, or or the girls knew they could be pastors. Mm -hmm. You know, they were like preaching right. from the floor when <laughs> right. I was coming up. You understand what I'm saying? Doing the announcements. Yeah, they yeah, couldn't yeah. come in the pulpit. No, you know, but right. now they can preach. They bishops now. Mm -hmm. You know, women are bishops now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They business owners. They running for president. Absolutely. They gonna be president. Yeah. I mean, so man, it's so powerful. I want you, if you're watching today, uh, to connect with Dr. Eddie Connor. If you have a daughter, you need to get her this book. If you are watching, you a pastor, you got woman's ministry, you got a youth ministry, you need to get this book. If you're a man, you need to get this yeah, book. Yeah. This book uh will 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 stretch you, um, but but it it will also help you to see the powerful blessing um, that God has given us in, in the person and presence of, of women. Mm -hmm. And, and I want to applaud you for doing that. I mean, this is very, very radical. Yes, sir. Like, yes, sir. A lot of men wouldn't write this book. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think you got to step out and, and really uh, get, in, get in a fight with other people, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and you even talk about that Black Panther movie. The women were war warriors, of course, as you mentioned. Your sister outside in the, in society may not have a spear, but she got spirit. Yeah, yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. they they were prayer they were prayer partners. Right. They were individuals who had discernment. Right. And uh, that's what I believe God is placing upon women these days to be able to exercise and do that. And so they can get the book. It's on my website, EddieConnor yeah. dot com. Okay. Uh, it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. Okay. And 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 while we're doing it, what's your Instagram? What's your yeah. Facebook? What's your, I don't know if you have Snapchat, yeah. but give us all of that. Facebook, stuff. Instagram, Twitter at Eddie. Connor Jr. Eddie Connor Jr. Jr. And yes, they can sir. connect with you. And so uh, yes, you know we're we're running out of time. We're running down. The time always goes fast oh, sure. when we have gifted guests. Um, but not only gifted host. Hey, well you know uh, <laughs> I do the best that I can with what you God it, has man. given me, and hopefully we get the victory. You're right. Uh, you have a powerful testimony. You're a preacher. You're a motivational speaker. I want people to know they can book you. They can contact you to come and speak. And 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 you you speak to everybody. I mean, Absolutely. You can speak to young people. Yes, you sir. can speak to to people who are mature. You can preach. You can teach. You can lecture. Yeah. You can motivate. You can inspirate. Right. You know. You can dedicate. Right? <laughs> you can educate. Yes, I mean, sir. Right. I mean, yes, you sir. can activate. That's right. right. <laughs> I mean, you know, so they need to know. They need to know that you. They just are, need to participate. Yeah, they so. need to participate. Right. <laughs> right. They need to know you're available. Yes. And they yes, can go to your website yes. as well to contact Absolutely. you. Right. They and give us website. that website again. EddieConnor.com. E d d i e c o n n o r dot com. Blessed to have the opportunity to preach at your church. Hey, man, and we're gonna get you too. back yes, this sir. year, man. And yeah. uh, we got some more people now. Yeah. That we had the last time. Well, hey, man. You know what I'm saying? Last. I went to church last Sunday. It was so full, uh, it wasn't no room for the devils. Well, it's where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is right, going on. Because the devils always show up late, man. The church was so packed, the devils went home. They, they had to get out. I, praise the Lord. <laughs> Look, let's do this real quick. This is your camera. I want you to look in this camera and just give us a one-minute motivation. Uh, all kind of folks watch this show, yeah. right? But uh, we all need to be motivated and to know uh, that what we face uh, is not as big as the God we serve. Just, 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 just speak a word of encouragement. Listen, you need to realize this: that what God has brought you through is preparing you for where He's taking you. You know, you don't need to be so caught up in the past that you don't move forward into the presence of your future. The past is a prison, but your future is freedom. And God is calling you out of the shadows to move you into a place of substance. You got to speak life over your life. You got to brush off the doubt and the eliminate the stinking thinking and believe that what God has placed inside of you is more than enough. The tragedy is to be gifted but to never open the package. This is your day. This is your prime time moment. This is your hour to stir up the gift that God has placed inside of you. No longer will you be depressed. No longer will you be sad. No longer will you even in, uh, think of so thoughts of suicide. This is your day to shake yourself and move out in the name of Jesus. Believe it because there is a breakthrough that is coming to you. My, my God, this is your day to shake yourself. Yeah. 
into a season of positive transformation. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your, mind. Renewing of your mind. Look, I'm, I'm, I want you to connect with us, David Alexander Bullock. Dot com. That's the website. Follow me on Facebook. Again, David Alexander Bullock, Twitter, D. Alexander B. And we will continue to bring these powerful, positive, profound, prolific voices uh, that speak to the human experience that when you find your purpose and you are walking in your assignment, there is nothing natural or supernatural that can stop you when you are firmly focused in faith on where you're headed. I'm telling you, God bless you. God keep you. I love you. I just want to I just want to pray for you. I don't know. I don't know. We, you know, you're probably watching this on your phone or watching it on your tablet. You're watching it in your home. I want to pray for you right now. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, we thank you today. Uh, we thank you for healing from cancer. We thank you for healing from sickness and disease. We thank you for overcoming. We thank you for the seasons of life. Uh, the changes that we go through. We thank you that we go from glory to glory to glory. And we're praying now for that woman, that man, that daughter, that son, that minister, that bishop, that pastor, that leader, that person who is not saved, who is trying to figure out what is next. And we know that favor, blessing, and overcoming is next. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Look, beloved, God bless you. Amen. We thank you, Lord. God bless you. God keep you. I'm David Alexander Bullock. This has been another episode of your season of change. Dr. Eddie Connor. Bless you, brother. Thank you, man. Great we appreciate you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Just fine, just fine.